Small trickle charging panels can be placed in a wide variety of places. If you're parking your car at the airport for an extended time, you can just slide the panel inside your windshield and plug it into your DC outlet. Boats on trailers can place panels where they will get sunlight, but they won't blow away or get stolen. Flexible panels can be deployed in a sunny location, but you'll have to tie them in place using bungee cords if there's a wind blowing or you're underway. Cruisers have to get inventive if they're going to use one or more of these rigid panels. Many common locations are poor choices due to shadowing from mass booms and running rigging. For example, it's really common for cruisers to mount panels on their hard or soft dodgers. We understand the appeal, but if the vessel's boom extends over the dodger, there's going to be points of sail where the output is greatly diminished. Another location is the cabin top, which is also subject to shadowing. One question you'll have to answer for yourself is how much you want to manage your solar panels. At one extreme, there's the set it and forget it approach of permanently mounted panels, which require no operator intervention. On the other hand, you can use tilt and swivel mounts or hinge mounts where you can optimize your panel orientation for maximum charging. There are some semi-custom mounts on the market that can help you track the sun with your panels. Some work like radar masts in the push pit area of your boat while others are rail mounted and allow you to hinge your panels to change their elevation. Finally, let's talk about the ways in which a solar panel can integrate into your boat's electrical system. The simplest, of course, is a trickle charging panel that can either plug into a DC outlet or attach directly to a battery with clip leads. We should point out that the DC outlet will only work if it's normally hot with the engine and or battery switch in the off position. Many cars cut power to their DC outlets when the key is off, so this will eliminate your ability to keep your battery topped off. For temporary use on your boat, you can simply lead a duplex wire down below and plug it into a DC outlet, or connect to your electrical system using a polarized plug. Like any energized DC circuit on board, this circuit must be fused close to the battery, and if the panel is larger than an amp or so, it should be fused at the panel as well. With permanently mounted panels, we've led the duplex wire below decks with a waterproof deck connection and then to a dedicated circuit breaker on the DC distribution panel. That way the panel can be turned on and off, has circuit protection, and is integrated with the rest of the vessel's systems. Adding solar panels to your boat can solve a multitude of problems, from maintaining your boat in a ready-to-go condition, to reducing your engine's runtime, to allowing you to enjoy the peace and quiet of an anchorage. Almost any boat can benefit, and solar panels, properly cared for, can last 10 to 20 years. Well, that about wraps it up for this West Advisor do-it-yourself project. My thanks to Kevin Osborne for his helpful insight, and to you for watching. You can find more information on solar panels at www.westmarine.com and in the West Marine Annual Catalog. See you on the water.